When I think of bang for buck, the first thing that comes to mind is your mum. The second thing is price to performance, but the third most forgotten thing is power efficiency. Today I could save you a bunch of cash by calculating how much electricity it costs to actually run your gaming PC. We're going to be using my free Google Sheet so that you can compare different PCs or GPUs to see how much they're going to cost you to run. If you've ever wondered how much it costs to run a 4090 system versus say a 4060 system then you're going to find your answer here. So in order to find out how many watts your system actually uses there's a few different ways to do it but probably the easiest way is to use PC part picker, which is what I've got up on the screen here. And you can see here I've put together a very high-end, very high power usage system with the i9-14900KS and the RTX 4090, the most power-hungry components you can think of. And this has given us um, estimated wattage of 860. Now I know this will actually probably be higher in reality because if you max out a 4900K it can actually use up to 330 watts, I've seen it happen, depending on the motherboard BIOS and settings. So this could realistically be a lot higher because this probably Probably takes into account the 250 watt but we'll use this as a sort of a rough and ready benchmark but just be aware that sometimes this number is isn't 100% accurate so this is my Google sheet it looks quite busy but I'm going to talk you through it and it's pretty comprehensive at least I think so so I've pasted here the wattage a screenshot from PC Part Picker as an example of what you're looking for obviously it says 606 here but we were more up in the 800s weren't we on our PC Part Picker list but the other piece of key information that you're going to need in order to calculate this is your electricity tariff. So up in the top left here, that's going to be our tariff. And this will be shown on your energy bill. And this is the cost per kilowatt hour. So that is running a thousand watts of power for an hour continuously. This is going to vary depending on where you are in the world, but the currency actually won't matter because I've not put any currency in here. But where I live in the UK, the electricity tariff is about the equivalent of 30 cents per kilowatt hour, which is pretty high. But I know some of you guys that live in the US, maybe in Texas or something, you're looking at more like 15 cents per kilowatt hour. So it's going to depend sort of where you are in the world and what your electricity tariff actually is as to what number you put in here but find that out and put it in here so I'm going to put 0 0.3 because that's the equivalent of 30 cents per kilowatt hour and that's basically what I'll be having here in the UK so if we recall our wattage from PC Park Pick a minute ago it was in the high 800s but I did say there'll be a bit of extra on there so let's call this 900 watts on this i9 system and that's going to show us how much the system is going to use so we'll put 900 into the watts there and this is going to all calculate it all for you and then I've got some really cool headings here that are going to tell you a few different aspects of what this is going to cost you to run so cost per hour to run this machine at full tilt is 27 cents that's quite a lot, isn't it? If you were to use this for three hours per day at 100% power usage, you would it would cost you 81 cents. If you're going to do it three hours per day for a whole week, $5.67. And then over the course of a year, it's just under $300 uh, if you're using it for three hours a day, every single day for a whole year. And then I've got some other headings here about, you know, if you were to use it two hours full out a day, one hour, you know, all these kind of things. And you can actually adjust this if you want. If you make a copy of this spreadsheet, you can actually change the number here, three, to something like whatever number of hours that you actually do in the day, and you can adjust this as needed. But it's quite unusual, even if you're doing high-end gaming, or even rendering to actually use every single watt that your PC can, okay, at peak usage. So that's why I've got this extra column here for 75% usage. So that's basically all of the same numbers, but uh, at 75% of what that one is. And that's a bit more of a realistic, if you're hammering your PC, that's a bit more realistic as to what you're actually going to use. And you can see on this system with the i9 and the 4090, uh, that's going to cost us quite a lot. So if we were to use this three hours a day, every single day for a whole year, that would cost us about $221 to run that in electricity cost on this tariff, which is pretty dang high and something you don't always think about. But if you think that 75% usage is a bit too high, then you can adjust this yourself. So instead of having 0.75 here in the cell, you could change this to what you think is more applicable. So maybe 50% of that peak wattage is what it normally uses. So you could change this to 0.5. The power is in your hands, guys, if you make your own copy of this. 
Now here is another box that you can fill in a value for as well, and that's going to be how much the system actually costs. So let's say I picked up this system for $3,000. That's going to tell me underneath how much this is actually going to cost me to have this PC for five years and run it, okay? And this total cost of ownership is based on cell E18, which is cost per year if you use it for three hours every single day at 75% usage. So it's kind of a worst case scenario if you like. And the worst case scenario is you pay three grand for the system, but then you're actually paying over a grand to run that in electricity cost over the five years. So it's quite a lot. But if you wanted to now compare this system versus one that is more power efficient or less power efficient, you can use the system two part of this spreadsheet. And let's say we use something a bit more modest that at peak usage is only going to use 600, and 600 watts, let's say. You can see the price difference here. And let's say we spent the same amount on the system. We can see here that if your system uses less power, of course, it's going to cost less money for you to run the electricity on this for the whole year. Um, and you can see here that it's about $700 versus $1,100 in terms of how much it's going to cost you to run that for five years. I've got a couple of other tabs at the bottom here, and maybe it's easier if I change the value of the price for the second system. So it will tell you the price difference between the two systems and the difference is 500 in favor of the blue which is system 2 but if I made this one more expensive you see it changes color to system 1 to show you which one is uh, better value basically in terms of actual cost but then you've got the energy cost difference per year if you use it for three hours a day so this is the difference between them and this is going to show you by how much each year it's going to be cheaper to run one system versus the other uh, but this one is actually based on the peak usage rather than the 75% usage. So if you wanted to change that again, you have the power. You can change this from D and F to E and G, and that will do it with the 75% usage. But you can see here that uh, per year, System 2 is going to cost you $98 less to run over the year. But this is cool because it doesn't just do it for whole computers. You can actually do this just to compare one component. So maybe a graphics card, for example. Let's compare those. So once again, you do all the same things in terms of your tariff and everything like that. But this time, instead of putting a whole system in, we're going to put in the wattage used by a certain GPU. So the 4090 uses, you know, about 330 watts, depending on the model, maybe a bit more, or a bit less. Whereas maybe if we think about something like a 4060 on this side, that's only going to use about 120 watts. So this will show us the difference between them. And again, the cost will be different as well. So we'll put 1,600 for 4090 and about 275 for a 4060. And you can see here the you know how much it costs to run just the 4090 at either 100% or 75% usage. Um, in the same way as we just uh, discussed it with the system. So you can use it in that way as well. One thing that is quite interesting is if you've got maybe an AMD Radeon card and then an NVIDIA card of a similar performance level, but the power efficiency is different, how does that actually play into your decision to buy it over the long run? So probably a good example for this would be a 4070 Ti Super versus a RX 7900 XT because they're kind of in the same ballpark for performance, if, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong. You can tell me below if that's the case. So let's put the uh, 4070 Ti Super on the System 1 column, and that can use about 280 watts, maybe 275, let's say. And then for the 7900 XT, we'll put that over here, and that uses about 300 watts. Okay, so we can now put in the prices of those. So the cheapest 4070 Ti Super that I'm able to get, they come in at about $750 quid, whatever. And then for the 7900 XT, the best price I could find was 690. Um, I know there's a 7900 GRE, which is also in a similar ballpark, but I'm not going to muddy the waters with that at the moment. Um, but you can do that yourself in your own spreadsheet as well if you wanted to. So we can see that the System 2, which we could actually rename this if you want, we could put 7900 XT there, and we could put 4070 Ti Super there, right? We can see that the price difference is $60 cheaper to get the 7900 XT just to buy it. And the total cost of running it is actually pretty similar. 
So you can see, you know, even if you run it at full tilt for three hours a day for a year, uh, you know, you're spending $90 on the 4070 Ti Super and $98 on the 7900 XT. So whilst the 4070 Ti Super is more efficient, that efficiency kind of isn't enough to make that extra price bump at the start worth it. The more expensive your energy is, the more this is going to matter. The longer that you have the system, the more this is going to matter as well. So if we were to change our energy tariff to something a lot cheaper, like 15 cents, you can see that the that difference kind of gets even smaller again. So you can see that it's only a difference of $4 a year when you've got much cheaper energy. So let's put it back to my current energy tariff, which makes my eyes water. And you can see the energy cost difference per year if you use it full tilt for three hours a day for a whole year. So in a worst case scenario, it's only going to be $8 cheaper to run the 4070 Ti Super every year. And that's not going to be enough to make up this difference in price for the same performance of about $60. So using this kind of table can be really good for informing your choices as to which components to buy. So whilst this video is a bit dry, I think it's actually one of my most helpful videos ever, actually. It's gonna help you really inform your choice as to which components to buy and how important power efficiency is gonna be for you. And if you want to use this spreadsheet, you can, because I'm going to put a link down in the description to the Google Sheet so you can use it yourself. And what I suggest you do is copy it to your own Google Sheets, and then you can edit it as you like and change the formulas around and that kind of thing. Once you've done that, let me know what you found down in the comments below. But I'm going to tell you about the takeaway lessons that I learned whilst building this calculator. Honestly, I thought efficiency would matter a lot more for how much that it would cost your PC to run and use over time. But I was actually wrong. The more expensive your electricity tariff, the more that that uh, efficiency actually matters. The less expensive your energy tariff, the more that the purchase price matters. But in either case, the purchase price and the efficiency are both important, but it's going to be on an individual basis, and that's why this sheet is so useful. The longer that you keep your PC or PC component, the more the efficiency is going to play into that total cost of ownership. As a rough and ready measure, I found that your PC is going to cost you about 30% of its parts value to run if you live in the UK. So if you built a PC with a thousand pounds worth of parts, it will cost about 300 pounds in electricity to run that PC for five years. If you're in the US, electricity is cheaper, so it's more like 17 and a half percent. So in that case, a $1,000 PC is going to cost you about $175 to run for five years. But these are just rough figures, but it's just to show you the overall principle of what I'm talking about. But what are the limitations of this Google Sheet and what didn't work or what could be improved? Now, this is a very broad brushstroke approach to calculating the cost of running a PC or a particular component, and it won't be exactly right. People use their PCs in different ways and with varying demands. It will never be perfect. Of course, using your PC at the desktop or web browsing doesn't use anywhere near 100% of that power, so that's going to play into how much it actually costs you to use. It's just meant to give you a bit of an idea about what's actually going on with power efficiency in a kind of a worst case scenario. And also this doesn't take into account other features that might be desirable in your PC or graphics card, such as ray tracing capability, the amount of VRAM it's got, or the noise levels, the coil wind, these kind of things are also important. You might disagree with the value of 75% being used to represent high mixed usage, and that's fair enough. You can suggest an alternative below. And like I said, if you copy the Google Sheet to your own Google Sheets app or Google Drive, you can make this however you want. Okay, so it's time for your feedback. Try out the free Google Sheet linked below. Tell me what works and what doesn't. And I'm also really interested to hear your thoughts about power efficiency as a whole and whether you particularly care about it. I get the impression that people don't, to be honest, but maybe this video changed your mind. This video was a lot of work and I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe, like, and comment so that more people can learn and enjoy. Until then, ladies, gentlemen, mothers. I'll catch you later.